Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to Coffee and the Word. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope and pray that you are all doing well this morning. Get some coffee here. Oh, I gotta tell you, last night I got to bed about 8.30. I was exhausted, uh, but I woke up with plenty of sleep and I woke up at 5.30 this morning. So uh, it's nice to get up and do this early. Uh, it is the second Sunday in Lent, March 5th, 2023. This morning, the Revised Common Lectionary, uh, we're going to start off in Genesis, and then we're going to Psalm 121, and then for the Epistle lesson, we're going uh, back to Romans. There's a few passages in there. And then um, it has, uh, we're going to the Gospel of John or Matthew. And let me see what Matthew, because it just says Matthew. Um, you know what? I'm just going to read them both. Um, it says John 3, 1 through 17, or Matthew. And Matthew is in italics, and it doesn't list anything. But, uh, but uh, I'm going to uh, go ahead and read that. Oh, what did I do here? I, I hit a button, and okay, here we go. All right. <laughs> All right, well. Uh, get a little starter fluid here. Oh, good stuff. All right. Uh, Genesis 12, 1 through 4a. And as always, may God bless the reading of his word. So here we go. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and, and the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. All right, uh, next to the psalmody, we're going to Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The, the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil he will keep your life the lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore all right um romans uh romans chapter 4 verses 1 through 5 and then it skips down to 13 through 17 and i i, I love this because uh, uh romans that paul you can imagine like someone talking to themselves. Paul is having a conversation. He'll ask a question, then he'll answer. Uh, so that's just Paul's way in this. So uh, here we go. What then are we to say was gained by Abraham, our ancestor, according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now to the one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due. But to the one who without works, trust him who justifies the ungodly, such faith is reckoned as righteousness. For the promise that we would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For if the law brings wrath, but where, where there is no law, neither is there a violation. For this reason it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and to, and to be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of us, uh, the father of all of us. As it is written, 
I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the, of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Interesting. All right. A little more coffee here. All right, the, the first gospel lesson, uh, John 3, verses 1 through 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. And what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do, do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who was born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I I will, I, very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify uh, to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one can ascend into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And, and just as Lo Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Hmm, good stuff. That's always good stuff. All right. Uh, the next gospel lesson, um, and, and again, this said either the gospel from John or from Matthew, and I'm just going to read both. And here we go. Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 through 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And from the, from the cloud a voice said, This is my Son, the Beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one else except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Hmm. And this is the word of the Lord. All right. All right. Uh, as always, the, uh, the Revised Common Lectionary offers a series of prayers. There is a thematic prayer, an intercessory prayer, and a scriptural prayer. And... Uh, and during the intercessory prayer, I'm going to lift up some, uh, a few people. So uh, let us pray. God of the living, 
Through baptism we pass from the shadow of death to the light of the resurrection. Remain with us and give us hope that, rejoicing in the gift of the Spirit, who gives life to our mortal flesh, we may be clothed with the garment of immortality. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Then the intercessory is uh, God of the covenant. You call us to be fruitful servants with cre within creation and to offer our lives at the foundation of your realm. We lay before you the desires of our hearts that we may be transformed uh, by their fulfillment. And at this time, I'd like to lift up a few people. Um, I'm just going to mention first names. Uh, the first one is Tim. Um, uh, my friend Tim uh, dealt with cancer a while back, and uh, it has come back. Um, and he's currently starting, starting his, started his treatment this past Friday. Um, on that he's uh, strong and, uh, a strong individual, and, uh, and so I just pray for the best for Tim. Um, I'd, I'd lift him up before God, and also uh, my friend Joe. Um, he's dealing with cancer. He's got a tumor in, a, in his chest, and uh, he's going, currently going through treatment. And so far, he's doing well. Um, but uh, I lift up uh, before you, and I, and I ask that you would pray for uh, my friend Tim and another friend Joe. Um, God knows who they are. But just uh, if you could pray for them, I'd be appreciated. And grant, O oh God, that the prayers we offer may be your channel for new and abundant life, not only hoped for, but worked for, through faithful word and deed. Amen. And then, God of amazing compassion, lover of our wayward race, you bring to birth a pilgrim, a pilgrim people and call us to be a blessing for ourselves and all the world. We pray for grace to take your generous gift and step with courage on this holy path confident in the radiant life that is your plan for us, made known and given in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right. Well, I hope and pray that you all have a fantastic day, uh, and I appreciate your prayers and uh, with all that. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. So be safe, be happy, and be blessed. And we'll see you tomorrow on Coffee and the Word. God bless.